Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, lots and lots to talk about. It's God. We are talking about tithes and offerings. And sometimes it's like, why do you go? Sometimes it's like we deviate from where we're going. No. You see, if you don't understand all this background that I'm giving you, you will be lied to. Every subject of God's word is not straightforward. Every subject of God, I'm telling you the truth. Every subject of God's word has a history. And if you don't understand where it's coming from, you will not know where it's going. And so along the way, someone can deceive you. I, I'm trying to help you so that you are not deceived. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we call for that daily bread? Say, Father, I demand now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise God. So yesterday I was talking to you about Melchizedek. Now, why was I talking to you about Melchizedek? I was explaining something to you that two covenants God made with Abraham. Remember, God told him, I will give you the land, right? And because God said, I will give you the land, God gave him the covenant of circumcision. So he said, you will circumcise everyone that is born eight days after the every male child that is born, you will circumcise them. Now, that's the covenant God entered with Abraham to keep him in the land. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. That's very powerful. Number two, the second covenant God made with Abraham was the covenant of provision presented by tithing. So Melchizedek met Abraham. I had to explain who Melchizedek was yesterday so that you will know this is not just a human covenant. So Melchizedek brought bread and wine to Abraham. Now bread and wine signifies it signifies provision. I will provide for you. Uh, when God says, I will provide for you, it's different from the rest of the world. Now, this is one subject the church has toyed with over the years. I'm telling you the truth. But you see, if, you, if, if we don't sit down and tell ourselves the truth concerning this, I'm about to share with you. That's why I didn't talk about tithe earlier. I'm going to delve into it. If we don't sit down and search and be truthful to ourselves, you lack or not, not you, you, you stand or you risk being cut off from God. I'm taking all this pain to go into these details. So Melchizedek, who was the word of God made flesh, showed up on earth and he came specifically to Abraham and he had with him bread and wine. So, in Hebrews tells us, David said the same thing, speaking prophetically, he says, Jesus will be made a high priest after the order of of Melchizedek. Now the question you ask is that if Melchizedek was an earthly king, why was he so special? That David would be prophesying and speak of him. That was not the only good king that existed. Did you ever know that Enoch was the king? Enoch was the king. He ruled his earth. The whole earth was ruled by him. Every king came to submit to him. So why, why was Jesus now being given a throne and a priestly order after Melchizedek? And Melchizedek was a king, the king of Salem. And the writer of Hebrews 
clear value or clearly stated the interpretation of Salem. So he's not speaking of it. He was not speaking of Jerusalem. So people, people say the old name of Jerusalem was Salem. So you're trying to give meaning in your mind to what does not exist. The Hebrew says king of Salem, which is interpreted king of peace. So, he came to Abraham with bread and wine. And he, he, he commanded Abraham, he actually commanded Abraham, take a tent and give to me. And Abraham obeyed. And when he did that, he now instructed Abraham. He said, lift up your right hand. I want you to follow this. He said, lift up your right hand. Haven't given the tithe. He said, lift up your right hand. And Abraham did. He said, swear before me that you will not take anything from all these things that are here. I'll read the scripture. Genesis chapter 14 and verse 20. Mm. 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 Let me start from verse 18. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. Follow the thoughts now. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high who has delivered your enemies and bless be God most high who has delivered your enemies into your hand and he gave him a tithe of all now the king of Sodom said to Abraham give me the persons and take the goods for yourself but Abraham said to the king of Sodom I have raised my hand to the Lord God most high the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a tread of a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you say, I have made Abraham rich. Did you see that statement? Now, before now, the revelation of God Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth, was not revealed until Abraham met Melchizedek. So Melchizedek said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Mm. Now, I told you something. I said, when Melchizedek met Abraham, he told Abraham, lift up your hand. He did. He said, now say, swear this. You will not take anything, even a shoelace, from all these things. But, but, but it's my, it's my, it's my spoils from the world. I say, yes, I know. But I'm the one that delivered them into your hands, remember? Oh, yes, sir. Okay, now, you are not going to take anything from there because I don't want you to attribute your riches to the king of Sodom. Mm, yeah, I don't want him to claim that he made you rich. Now, Abraham... See, I want you to understand the character and the thoughts of God. Abraham was happy. I mean, he's gone to war, delivered all of them, all their goods and their, their people, delivered them. Now, normally, all those things belong to Abraham. I hear some people say, Abraham tied what was not his. No, 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 brothers and sisters, no. They were his at that moment. So the king of Sodom did the right thing to say, just give us our people. You can take all the goods. He wasn't doing Abraham a favor. They are the spoils of war. So it was in Abraham's discretion. So it's not like Abraham would have said, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. No. Abraham could have easily asked him before. What were you expecting? And that would have been okay. But you see, Melchizedek showed up to interrupt Abraham because that was what Abraham was going to do said, Abraham, now hold on. Remember, God has blessed you and promised you that he will make you great. And 
Through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Yes, sir. Now, these goods that you have here, you are not going to take even a shoelace from it. And don't take anything from the king of Sodom. Now, what does that mean? It means, number one, don't hold back anything from it. And number two, if the king of Sodom offers anything to you, don't accept it. Now, why? Was the king, was God beefing the king of Sodom? Yes. Yes, he was. Praise <laughs> God. Praise <laughs> God. Of course, you know, Sodom was later destroyed and everything in it was burnt down. So, so God knew why he was telling Abraham, don't, uh, don't take anything from him. So he says, don't collect a shoelace. Nothing. And if the king offers you, don't accept it. God made Abraham swear. Because he didn't want Abraham to change his mind concerning it. And Abraham did that. How, when did this happen? When he met Melchizedek. Say, how do you know that? By the Holy Ghost, of course. It was when he met Melchizedek. Melchizedek told him to swear. So he lifted up his hand. Now, Abraham, interpreting this, said to the king of Sodom, I'm sorry, I can't take anything. But, but, I mean, is your right? Abraham said, no, sir. I have sworn before the Lord Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth. Now, do you think Melchizedek just told him, don't take anything? No, nah, there were promises attached to that thing. Abraham had the explanation revealed to him. Abraham, God is going to bless you. This thing, this is but change. Don't take it. The same thing happens to us. But yes, some people fail that test. A bed in hand is better than ten in the bush. A bed in hand. But God is telling you, that bed in hand, let it go. Ah, ah, uh -uh. You better learn to let go when God says let go. So, why did he tell him? First, he told him, give a tenth of everything. Give a tithe of everything. And so Abraham gave the tithe. Then Melchizedek said to him, don't take anything. Give everything back to him. So Abraham literally came from that war with nothing. But there was something he did that was smart. He says, let me read verse 23, that I will take nothing from a tread of a sandal strap and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say I have made Abraham rich. Then he says, except 24 now, except only what the young men have eaten and the portion of the men who went with me, Enna, Eskol, and Mamre, let them take their portion. Now, Melchizedek also told Abraham what to do. All these portions he said, remember I said what the servants, that's the young men. The young men, the servants that went to work, they took their portion. See that now? No. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Titan is connected to this blessing. Remember, Melchizedek brought to Abraham bread and wine. Bread and wine means sustenance by me. Now, you remember Jesus in, in, in John chapter 6, speaking of eating his flesh and drinking his blood. He said, he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood, even he, as I live by the Father, so the one who eats me will live by me. Now that's a very powerful statement. I'm sharing, I told you we're not doing Bible study. I'm sharing from the revelation angle of Titan. We'll pick up scriptures, but I'm showing you from the revelation angle and then you can do the study. Please take down all the scriptures I'm giving to you. So, Melchizedek came to Abraham with bread and wine. And that bread and wine signifies provision. I will provide for you. So to 
seal of that covenant. He told Abraham, don't take anything from that king. Why? Because I will provide for you. Take, this is the first batch. Now, give me your first batch. Bring the tithes. So that exchange took place. Why was that bread and wine so significant? Because it came from heaven. Melchizedek didn't go get it from one bakery to get bread and wine from one in, uh, 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 winery or producer of wine. No, sir. He brought that bread and wine from heaven. Just like God gave the children of Israel manna, they didn't need from anywhere. Just like God fed Abraham, eh, eh, Elijah, you understand? Yeah. So Melchizedek brought that bread and wine from heaven. Understand what I mean from heaven? You can't trace that bread and wine on earth, so he gave it to him. And God was signifying by that, I take responsibility of providing for you. So here is the covenant. You will give a tenth of what you get and I will take responsibility of seeing to it that you are sustained and provided for. And God taught Abraham to teach this to all his children. Now you see, why, did, why would he instruct him to teach all his children? You understand why God came in Genesis 18 and speaking of Abraham says, I know him, he will command his children and his household after him. Command them with what? The instructions that I have given to him. He will command them. As long as they keep that command, a covenant has been cut. Now the command follow. As long as they keep that command, remember the promise was what? I will make you great and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So it's not a prophecy for his day. Because you see, when God spoke concerning Abraham, in Genesis chapter 18, <laughs> Let me read this in Genesis chapter 18, from verse 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Since Abraham is going to become a mighty nation, and all the nations, now this word nations is actually the same word translated families, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him. For I have known him, reading the New King James, in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. So God was going to depend on the children of Abraham keeping the covenant keeping the instructions of the covenant so that God will bring to pass what he has said concerning Abraham. What did God say concerning Abraham? I will make him great and all the families of the earth will be blessed in him. How will all the families be blessed in him? By that covenant that took place when Abraham met Melchizedek. So, mm, the instruction by Abraham to his children is that two things, they tithe. Second one, circumcision. Those are instructions Abraham had to draw into his children's ears. 
Say, but, but the Bible never said that Isaac paid tithe. It's not everything that will be written, brothers and sisters. That's why you must go to the Holy Spirit. No, no, call me Nikki Yakama. Just like when people say, eh, why is there no titan in the New Testament? I've said this many times and times, and I'll still say it again. When did the New Testament stop? How come you're saying it's not in the New Testament? Where are a lot of people titan today? Come to my house, we tithe. There are ministries that tithe. So there's titan in the New Testament. What are you talking about? You're against it, doesn't mean it. Don't say it's not in the New Testament. We are in the New Testament. We are part of the New Testament. Say, God, there's no titan in the New Testament. If it's important, it would have been in the New Testament. It's in the New Testament. Show me. Look at my life. Am I not in the New Testament? Praise <laughs> God. Don't be ignorant. Don't be foolish either. All right, so now, so Abraham had to instruct his children. Now you find Jacob speaking freely. He told God, look, if you bless me just like you have said, then I'll vow. If everything you give me, I'll give you a tenth. Where did he learn it from? His father taught him. His father taught him. Abraham taught Jacob about tithing. Oh yes, he did. This is the covenant we have with God. As long as you keep this covenant, God will see to it that we are provided for. Now that's the reason you look at Jacob and, 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 and Joseph was sold into Egypt. Now there was famine in the whole world, right? There was famine in the whole world. My time is up. Praise <laughs> God. Woo, glory. I've got to stop here now. Don't worry, we'll continue from here tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.